one. I want to preface this story by saying I'm huge into the paranormal. Clearly, or I wouldn't be sharing this. I've been having paranormal experiences since I was little. I love ghosts, have a ghost tattoo, named my cat Boo, have multiple ghost hunting tools, etc. I've been ghost hunting everywhere from Savannah, Georgia to California. It's my passion. The paranormal or unexplained stories I have are endless, and most of them are harmless. But one night made me stop looking for the paranormal for some time. This is the story of that night. I typed that story into my notes the night it happened. May 8th, 2020, 10pm. Tonight I saw a ghost. Here is the story. Believe what you want. I got in my car to go pick up my little sister from her friend's house. It's about eight minutes away. I got in my car, like normal, started up, and start to drive to her house. It's important to know that immediately when I got in my car, it felt off. I chalked it up to the fact that I was 15 driving a car without a license, but I couldn't brush it off. Because of the unsettling feeling I had, I never turned any music on and drove in silence. I wanted to be extra careful and aware of my surroundings. It's also important to know me and my best friend always say flashing lights or lights flickering in general because of a past experience or a warning. So I'm driving through this neighborhood I've been in a million times, and out of the corner of my eye I see this porch light turn on and off and I say out loud, okay, I see you. I don't really think much of it and continue on my way to my sister. Eventually I come to this stop sign and the street light above me turns off completely and on again and off again. I freeze staring at the light, take a deep breath and keep driving. I take a turn to the street the house is on. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone's garage floodlight flashing so, so fast, like the light bulb was about to blow. I look out of my driver window to look at it while I'm slowing down. My head is out the window and I'm rolling at a stop. I am so caught off guard. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I see someone sitting behind my passenger seat in the car. My heart froze and I check to double check what I saw, so I stop my car completely in the middle of the road and turn all the way around. Clear as day, a man is sitting in the back seat of my car, and I can describe him very clearly. His head was down, but he had blonde hair parted to the side that looked like Ryan Gosling in Crazy Stupid Love. His arm was resting on the armrest of the door. I don't remember his clothes, just that his eyes were so sunken in. His whole face, in fact, he had a really long pointed nose and bushy eyebrows. He was very, very, very tall because his knees were up so high that they were basically to his chest and he didn't say anything but I could see his chest rise and fall. He was there and I could see every detail of him. There was no way it was my imagination and I looked at him for what felt like hours when it was probably only 15 seconds at most. And suddenly he was gone didn't see him float away or anything like that. He just wasn't there anymore. I parked my car in the middle of the street, got out, and looked outside and inside my car for someone. I was so confused and convinced a living, breathing man was just in my car. The worst thing was the way he made me feel. I have seen ghosts before, and from my experience, they don't acknowledge me or give off bad energy. He did. When I looked at him and time froze, I felt like I was in danger. I felt like he wanted to hurt me. It was malevolent. I got back in my car and continued to drive to my sister, picked her up, and as we left I was holding back tears and shaking like a leaf. The thing was, I knew deep down the whole drive something was off, and I wasn't alone the whole time, and that the lights were indeed a warning. This man scared me. I came home and broke down in tears trying to tell this story. Again, believe what you may, but this was real. Now, since this has happened, I have been to a medium, sold the car, stopped ghost hunting for a while. Now I am back, and so excited. 2. To begin, I'd have to mention that the house is an old farmhouse. It's set out in the country with farm acreage in front, and stayed land towards the back. 
Love the location with only a 10 minute drive into town. We only have one close neighbor, so it's pretty private for the most part. The previous owner had bought the house on an estate auction since the person who owned it died. Elderly lady who grew up in this house and actually had a lot of acres along with the house. I was told she died in the house. They found her days later. I also heard that her son had died at the house too. They said he hung himself in the garage, even though I don't know for sure. The house has had many updates through the different owners, including myself, but I don't really know how old it is. I believe it's very old, and I've tried looking into the history. I wouldn't be surprised if it was built in the early 1900s. After we bought it, we heard stories of the house being haunted from the previous owners. Never imagined it being true. My first experience was when our dog was in the living room late one night. He was whimpering like she was afraid of something and looking towards the wall or even one of the bottom rooms. But there was no one there. I called her over and over to me, and thinking to myself how odd that was, one day I had just taken a shower and I heard someone tapping on the door handle. The handle was pretty loose and could only make that noise if you pressed or tapped on it downward. I said just a minute, then opened the door thinking it was one of my kids needing to use the bathroom, but no one was there. I called out, but no one was near. I asked everyone, and they all said they'd been outside playing. I've always been a skeptic, so I just brushed it off. There had to be a logical explanation, right? There is one room in the house that whomever has slept there has felt the bed shift, as if someone who'd sat on the edge of the bed while they slept. All three of my kids, all grown now, experienced this, but they slept in that room at different stages in life. Funny thing is that they all didn't know about it until years later. I told my son not to mention it to my youngest daughter or she might be afraid. Come to find that she felt it too. My husband has heard someone calling his name when he was sleeping, at least seven times in a three-month period. He has also heard footsteps downstairs when he's been home alone. One time I had just gotten home from work and I was talking to my husband. Then my cell phone starts ringing and it's the house phone calling my cell phone. We both looked at each other knowing we're the only ones at home. I asked him, did you try calling me before I got home? And that's why the house phone is calling me back? Of course he said no and that was very weird. I heard my daughter's voice calling out to me saying mom when she wasn't even home. And my husband has heard my daughter call out the word mom, too, when he was home alone. Another time, my husband and I heard a clear male voice coming from a back room in the house. Thought it was my son. But no one was there. I never felt scared at our home. Wait. I did feel scared, once, when I was home alone. I'd been home from work and relaxing when all of a sudden... I heard something fall down in the upstairs bedroom, and it was pretty loud. It was 10.30pm, and that really freaked me out. I hurriedly went to the kitchen and grabbed the biggest knife we had. I kept looking upstairs, wondering if I should go investigate what had caused that loud noise. My husband was at work, so I called my son, who at the time was at a party 30 minutes away. I told him what happened and that I was freaking out. He comes over with several of his friends to the house. They're all carrying, lock and load, and do a sweep of the house and inside. My son checked the crawl space underneath. They didn't find or see anything that could have made that noise, or any intruders. I felt safe after that. I've heard the wood floor creaking ten feet away from me, and looked knowing that I am home alone. But I didn't feel a bad vibe other than that experience with the upstairs noise. There's many more things that others experience in our home, but I'll stop there. 3. So I've had a couple of incidents in my life. These popped into my head today because while grocery shopping, I passed a woman wearing Aquanet hairspray, which is a smell I associate with Gran. So my Gran passed a month before I turned 16. She was my rock and helped raise me. She lived 900 feet down the road from us. I spent as much time at her house as I did at home. 
I was devastated when she passed, but throughout my life, she has been about, still looking after me. The first time was when I was 18. I was at a friend's house. There were five other people there that night. Me, my two best friends, the parents, and younger brother. We'd stayed up talking about graduation and our summer plans, when suddenly we all heard Gran's voice, Girls, there's a fire. Her room was in the walkout basement. We all kind of looked at each other, like you heard that, right? When it came again, only louder, Girls, there's a fire! We bolt out her door, and the stairs are full of smoke. So out the door we go, screaming for her parents and brother. We run around to the front and start pounding on the windows. The whole kitchen area was engulfed in flames. We got her family out, and a neighbor called the fire department. The second time, I was in my early twenties and living in the Rockies. I was camping with my then-significant other in Medicine Bow National Forest. We were doing backcountry, so not in one of the campgrounds. Beautiful clear night. I wake up horrified and confused, when I suddenly hear softly, Echo, leave now. Pack out. I sit up and listen. I can hear normal night sounds. I kind of shake it off as a dream and lay back down. Suddenly, Gran's yelling, Echo, pack out! My significant other sits bolt upright. Who's yelling your name? I'm like, uh, my Gran? Huh? And then there she is again. Echo, go now! We sit there wide-eyed for about a minute when he says, Time to go! He was indigenous and wasn't messing about. We dropped camp, packed up, and hiked down to the truck. The next afternoon we went into the ranger station to pull our names off the books, when we found out a couple about a half mile from where we were camping were struck by lightning in their tent the night before. The third time wasn't as life or death as the others, but it was still something that saved me. I was 25, the significant other from the previous story had become my husband, when just after our small human was born, he passed away unexpectedly. I was a widow with a newborn. I was devastated and lost, just kind of existed. My baby was the only thing I had anymore. I moved back home to have help, and I couldn't stay in the place I had lost my husband. I had been home for a few months, but I was very depressed, had postpartum issues too. I went to work, cared for my son, and slept. I didn't want to be near anyone but my baby. One night I was sitting on the back porch, rocking the baby, watching it rain. Suddenly I felt someone sit on the swing with me. I could smell her aquanet and lotion. The smell of her fresh cup of coffee. And then I felt a hand on my knee. He's fine, sweetheart. Your man is getting on like a house on fire with your uncle and papa. He wanted you to heal, to be yourself again. It wasn't like the other times. I didn't physically hear her. It was more in my head. But it was a turning point for me. I got myself into therapy. It wasn't a quick fix. But I learned how to deal with my grief. When I met my current significant other, my baby was seven. We were friends first. I still wasn't sure I wanted to even have a partner again, until I was packing to move and found a box of Gran's letters and such. One was a letter she had wrote to Papa after he had passed. She promised him she wouldn't waste away without him, and that even though they had loved each other, she wouldn't lock up her heart if someone special came along. So she helped me decide he was worth risking my heart again. My most recent was a bit over a decade ago when I was pregnant with my second small human. I worked a closing shift. I was on my way home at about 10.30pm. Dark country, two-lane, blacktop road with cornfields on both sides. I had the top off my jeep because it was a mild September night. I was seven months pregnant. I wasn't going fast. Probably 50 miles per hour. As I was coming up on an intersection where the crossroad had to stop, the smell of cornfields was suddenly gone. Instead, I smelled Aquanet and my Grand's lotion. Almost overwhelmingly so in a topless jeep. Then clear as a bell, her voice said, Echo, stop. 
I slap the brakes, sliding to a stop, stalling out as a full-sized truck blows through the intersection, not twenty feet in front of me. The smell got even stronger for a brief moment before it was gone. I was so shaken up it took me three tries to start my jeep. Those are the ones that really make me believe that the other side isn't as far away as we think. Four. Stay with me. This started before my husband and I met. Weird things started happening to him when moving into an old rental home. Objects being moved and finding them in different spots. Having to keep heaters on in the summer. Middle of the night waking to what sounds like someone walking into his front door. Investigating and finding nothing. Knocking, things falling over and footstep sounds. It all came to a head when he found black handprints on his attic door above his bed. He decided that was too creepy and stayed the night at a friend's house. Everything was fine. He left the next day. Later that day, his friends called him asking if he was messing with them. Obviously, he was confused. They said they found black handprints around their attic door. Really, nothing could explain it. Where we live, attic doors are normally on the ceiling, and they pull down. He finally decided to move, and moved into a second floor apartment. Everything was fine for a few weeks. He comes home one day, before he can get into his front door. His neighbors ask if he has a roommate. Again, confused by the question, he says, No, it's just me. Why? They said it sounds like someone has been going in and out of the apartment all day, with the front door slamming and stomping around. He just assumes maybe it was maintenance because they are older apartments. He walks in to find more black handprints and smudges all around the inside of the door and entryway walls. Thankfully, his neighbor downstairs is a religious woman. She blessed the apartment and nothing more happened there. That's when we met and started dating. We fell in love, blah blah blah. I moved in and never experienced anything. I definitely believed him because I myself have experienced a lot of paranormal activity growing up. We eventually moved because he got a promotion and his job relocated him. We think nothing more of this weird spirit. We finally settle in and everything is going great. One day I'm home by myself with the dogs. Our house had a downstairs, with half being garage and the other half being what I would call a man cave. Tile floors and rock walls with a cabin looking bar. Very echoey down there because we didn't use it, so it was an empty room. From upstairs I hear what sounds like things being thrown. I can hear the bouncing of the object once it hits the floor. It only lasted about 30 seconds. I thought someone had broken in, so I locked the door that leads down there. For extra measures, I shove a chair under the door handle. I knew my husband was getting home soon, so I just sat on the couch in silence, watching the door. Watching for movement and listening for more noise. Nothing. He gets home and checks it out. Again, nothing. Nothing on the floor. Nothing to identify what could make that sound. We let it go and move past it. Everything goes back to normal. A few weeks pass, and he's in bed for the night. Maybe he laid down for about ten minutes and I'm in the living room. All of a sudden, beating on the wall. It's so hard it shakes things hanging on our wall. Our dogs start freaking. I'm too scared to even get off the couch, so I start screaming for him to come in the living room. And if that was him. He was asleep and heard nothing. We cannot find the source of the noise. He eventually goes to bed and I don't really sleep that night. Nothing else happens, though. The only thing that really continued happening after that was what sounds like scratching on the walls. Still can't explain what it was. We move again because he put in for a transfer, so we can get back to the state we originally lived in. That's where we wanted to be. I don't take any chances this time. I believe in God. I have a relationship with him. Always have. I bless the house. I make him do it with me. I bless with all my heart in the name of Jesus, demons flee. Nothing happens in that home. We lived there for several years. He eventually quits that job. He gets a job closer to my family, and we move. 
All this stuff is years in the past, so I think nothing of it. Everything is fine for months. One day, it's a Sunday afternoon. We both had a long week. So he ends up falling asleep in the living room, and I fall asleep in our bedroom. I wake up to go into the living room. He eventually wakes up and goes into the bathroom. Coming out, he has a weird look on his face, telling me, You're messing with me? I'm clueless, so I ask him what's up. He just tells me to come here. I walk into the bathroom. All his bathroom things are neatly stacked on the sink. I mean everything he uses, shampoo, body wash, razors, anything you'd expect someone to keep in the bathroom, neatly put onto the counter. We're baffled, so I just start praying. We calm down and go on with our lives. Eventually more black smudges and handprints around the attic. I had enough, so I blessed the house. We've been living here for years now and nothing has happened. I think it's back. We've been having some financial hardship. It's causing both of us to be stressed. Kind of just casting a dark cloud due to our circumstances. The other night I'm laying in bed and he's letting the dogs out to potty before we go to bed. I hear banging on the wall. Kind of weirded me out, but I thought maybe it was my husband. I asked him if he dropped something or banged on the wall. He said no. I don't see anything more because I don't want to give him something more to stress about. It's now 2 a.m. here. He's asleep, and a very deep sleeper at that. I walk into our bedroom, and I swear I heard a very deep voice say hello in a whispered tone. At this point, I don't even freak anymore. I'm just over it. Looking for advice. Looking for someone with a similar story. Any idea what this thing really could be, and why it's got a grip? How does it keep coming back? Why does it keep coming back? Will it always be like this? I'm just looking for some answers. Please help. This is not a made-up story. I wish it was fake, but it's not. Let me also say that I've been seeing stuff out of the corner of my eye a lot lately, but I've thought nothing of it till the banging and whisper. Thinking now, I've actually been seeing something. I've also been hearing whispering when drifting off to sleep, but I've just been assuming I'm having a dream. Now I'm not so sure. 5. My very first experience happened when I was 7, and we had just moved into a small farmhouse in New Hampton, New York. The house still stands, albeit in disrepair, but it's there. When we moved in, it was a series of spider webs, dirty floors with the attic full of stuff they didn't want, and the bedroom that I would share with my three sisters. Pool as well. We found dolls from the 1920s, old newspapers, and even an entire series of Life magazine in pristine condition. All of which they let my mom sell. It took us weeks to clear that room from all the boxes. When we finally got our cots in there, we had no curtains on the two windows to my right that my sister slept under. The moon shone through, illuminating right up to the edge of my cot. We had those thin blankets with one edge that had silk on it. I lay there under my thin blanket, hoping sleep would find me. Just as I started to doze off, I heard heavy breathing coming from the right side, down past the windows. It was moving slowly towards me. Assuming it was a sister, I yelled, Knock it off! It went quiet, and I fell asleep. The second night, with my sister sound asleep, the labored breathing began again. It was raspy, desperate, and slowly moving towards me. So I sat up and I yelled again to knock it off and lay back down. It did not stop. It seemed to get heavier and darker and creeping closer to me. So I sit up again, the full moon illuminating the area of the room where the breathing was. I thought this time I'll see which sister is trying to scare me and yelled stop it. Now I can see most of the room and there was nothing there but that terrifying dark raspy and desperate breathing getting to the foot of my bed. But there was nothing there. I quickly laid down, covering myself with that thin blanket, horrified as the breath creeped closer to my bed inch by horrifying inch. I don't remember falling asleep. I do remember it stayed by my bed until I was too scared to look. The next night, 
the same thing, but this time it's moving a little faster to me. Again, I yelled for any sister to knock it off as I sat up. Again, the moon cast its light on that room, and nothing there but a deep, dark, nasty breath headed my way. As it approached my bed, I could hear it crystal clear, but there was nothing there. I went flat so fast and pulled that thin blanket over my head. It worked last night. I prayed it would work again. But this time it inches closer and closer as it gets more desperate and grotesque. Now it's next to my bed and it begins to lean over and breathing hard. It's getting closer to me. Suddenly I feel hot breath upon my face as the terrifying heavy breathing is right on me. I was shaking. I figured it had to be me. It had to be my hot breath. I was feeling through that thin blanket. So I hold my breath. More hot breath. I hold my breath tighter when the breathing takes in a large, raspy breath and blows it hard through my blanket. I froze, terrified. I figured this had to be a sister because I held my breath. The breath does it again, so as fast as I could, I whipped my blanket down to look at what was hovering over me. The room illuminated perfectly, but there's nothing there. Then all of a sudden, right in front of my face, that hot, raspy, heavy breath blows in my face again with nothing attached to it. I screamed in horror, running as fast as I could. It was hard for my family to calm me down. I know what I experienced was real and terrifying. In the five or six years we lived in that rental, I never went back in that room, not once. I wouldn't cross the threshold. It was shortly after my experience we found that the old man living there alone for years after his wife passed away died in that room amongst his hoard of boxes. Not one of my sisters had that experience. I never had it again, but I avoided that room like the plague. This experience made me interested in what haunts us. So has this ever happened to you? A disembodied, ghostly breath. I will never ever forget it. I'm 62 now, and I still remember the actual feeling. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Paranormal Stories, episode 369. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please do hit the like button. It helps YouTube recommend the video to other people. As they're not really doing it much on their own, so we'll have to encourage them. And if you'd like early access to these videos, then you can support me on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. Trying to get the numbers up there a little bit, as YouTube just isn't getting the bills paid anymore. So, if you'd like to join, click on the link, and you'll get the videos on Monday. Usually, usually on a Monday they go up. You'll also find a link to the Hellfreezer merchandise store on Teespring. If you really enjoyed today's video, then you can leave a tip by hitting the little heart with the dollar sign underneath and selecting the tip of your choice. You don't have to do any of that, but I do appreciate it, and it's greatly helping me out. Okay, I don't think we have any other business today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Do you ever turn your cell phone off, your smartphone off, if you have one, when you're at home? Or do you kind of always need to have access to it? Do you find yourself reaching instinctively and just, you know, kind of checking the time or seeing if there's any notifications? I am certainly the guy that does that. It's the only time my phone's ever off is if I'm restarting it because it's maybe been a while since I did that. But when, let me know what you think in a comment below. And before we go, we'll have the answer of the day from a previous video. And I think this question was in relation to what's the latest rabbit hole you find yourself going down? And today's answer comes from Juan Legrand. Right now, it would be Chosen Family. I have finally caught up with the weekly videos, so I'm searching other things. Thank you very much for your answer, Juan. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. Time for food, I think. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.